Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking at a slightly different way of dealing with these heat transfer problems. So instead of setting up an ODE, what we're going to be doing instead is thinking of each of these different heat transfer elements, conduction, convection, and radiation, as resistances. So we're going to go back to circuits and try to draw parallels between our heat transfer problems and a circuits problem. So let's look at a very simple circuits problem where we simply just have a single resistor and a voltage difference across that resistor. This resistor has some resistance, which is measured in ohms. And because of the voltage difference, we're going to have some current through that resistor. And we can go point to Ohm's law and say that that change in voltage, the voltage drop, is going to be equal to I multiplied by R. So what can we do in heat transfer? Well, instead of voltage, we're going to have temperatures. We're still going to have a resistance. The units are going to be different, and we'll talk about that later. But instead of current, we're going to have our heat flow. And we want this to look basically the same. So we're going to have our delta T, our temperature drop, is going to be equal to our Q dot multiplied by R. And this tells us what the units of this resistance need to be, because we're trying to convert watts to Kelvin. So we need our resistance to be in units of Kelvins per watt. So the top of our little picture here is for electric circuits. And the bottom is for heat transfer. And just a reminder that these deltas are voltage and temperature drop in the direction of either our current or our heat flow. This is the picture that we're trying to draw. And we're going to look at conduction, convection, and radiation and try to form those equations into something that looks like our resistance equation over here. So let's start off with conduction. Fourier's law says that the heat flux is going to be equal to a negative k dt dx. Well, we need to get this to a delta t. So the only change that we really need to make is that this is going to be a negative k delta t. And our delta x here, we're going to call our L. So if you have some length or some distance that the heat is traveling, that's going to be that L there. And then just to address an inconsistency with how we're calling these things, uh, the dt dx here, if t is increasing, then this will be positive. But we're looking for a temperature drop to match how we treat it in circuits. So this is going to be a negative to account for that inconsistency. And then once we have that, we get to just cancel those negatives and we're good to go. We have our delta t. We still need to get our q dot. So let's solve for delta t uh, to get things as close to this as possible. We have a delta t is equal to q l over k. And remember that the relationship between heat flux and our heat flow or heat transfer is just lowercase q is equal to capital Q dot over a. And then we keep that l over k along. And now we're in a place where we can actually identify our resistance. So we have our delta t is equal to q dot multiplied by stuff. Well, all that stuff, L over Ka, is our resistance. So I'm going to label this as our conductive resistance is equal to L over Ka. So with conduction done, let's go look at convection. So for convection, we use the formula Q is equal to some film coefficient or heat transfer coefficient multiplied by our change in temperature. So once again, we're going to solve for delta T, which for this case is just Q over H. And again, we're going to turn this lowercase Q into a capital Q. So we get Q dot over A times one over H. And our resistance is just gonna be this one over H A. Now radiation gets a little bit tricky. So the base equation for radiation 
is that Q is equal to our emissivity multiplied by the Seffen-Boltzmann constant multiplied by the temperature of our surface or wall to the fourth minus the temperature of our surroundings also to the fourth. So the problem here is that our delta T is not immediately evident. So we're going to use a factoring formula that says that a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times a plus b. And we're going to have to apply this twice. The first time gets us to epsilon sigma multiplied by t of the wall squared minus t infinity squared multiplied by the pluses. And then we need to apply it again here. But once we get down to this point, we can say that this term is our delta t, and everything else is what we call our radiation heat transfer coefficient. So with this terminology in hand, we can go back and rewrite our Q back here as our radiation heat transfer coefficient multiplied by delta T. Now this looks exactly like our convection term, which means that we can write our radiation resistance as one over our radiation heat transfer coefficient multiplied by that area. So for our three different heat transfer cases, we have three different resistances. And of course, if we have cylindrical or spherical situations for conduction, then this equation changes as well. But we're not going to cover that here. With these resistances in hand, let's go look at a simple problem. So our problem is going to be two regions separated by a composite wall. And this composite wall is composed of um, one section that just covers the entire area. It's going to have a thermal conductivity K1. Like I said, it covers the entire area, which we can just label A. The second section of wall is split into two pieces with thermal conductivities K2 and K3 and areas A2 and A3. And then A2 and A3, of course, add up to A. And then these are touching different air surfaces. So we can give those some values as well. So I'm going to give that a heat transfer coefficient, H in, and then on the outside, we'll have H out. So in this problem, we actually have five different temperatures. We have the temperature of the air inside this room. We have the temperature at that first boundary between the air and the wall. We have the temperature of the boundary between the two sections of wall. And then we have the temperature between the wall, the outside, and we have the actual temperature of the surroundings in the outside. So five different temperatures to look at. So if we were just trying to chug away at that, uh, it'd be get complicated very quickly. But what we're going to do is we're going to redraw these five temperatures. And instead of these walls and air gaps, what we're going to do instead is just put a resistor in between each of these temperatures. And between two and three, we have two different paths for heat to follow. So just like with current, which has, whenever it has two paths, we put resistors in parallel. We're going to do the same thing for heat transfer. And then I'm just going to label each of these resistors. And what we can do now is use that same equivalent resistance theory that we did for circuits, but now we're applying it to heat transfer. So we can find the total resistance between the temperature inside the room and the temperature outside the room using the same sort of formulas that we did back in circuits. We have the convective resistance inside the room plus that first section of wall. And then we can say that R2 and R3 are in parallel. And then finally, we have R out. And just as a reminder, this R2 parallel R3 is a very simple equation that we can use. So R2 parallel R3 is going to be R2 times R3 divided by R2 plus R3. So once we find those resistances, we can just plug that parallel section into that formula. But the end result of all this is that our delta T is going to be equal to Q dot R tote. 
And this delta t here, we know is over the entire section. So this is going to be t in minus t out. And the assumption here is that our q dot is moving from left to right. Q dot is coming from the left and it travels through the entire circuit. So typically we know the two temperatures all at the end, and then we are able to use those along with our knowledge of resistance to figure out what this Q dot is. Then once we find Q dot, we can use that to go find individual temperatures uh, throughout the rest of the system. So for instance, if we wanted to find the temperature on the surface of the wall, we would just look at the delta T, which in this case is going to be Tn minus T1, because we're just looking at this first resistor. And again, since we're looking at that first resistor, we just write R in here. And this, we know what Q is from this first equation. We should know what Rn is, and from that we should be able to figure out what T1 is. Now, if we're doing this section right here, our Q dot actually splits, but we can go ahead and just write the equivalent resistance of the two resistors in parallel and say that T2 minus T3 is going to be Q dot multiplied by those two resistors in parallel. So this should be enough to get you started on any of these more complex problems where just the, the simple formulas uh, just make things really complicated. We switch things into equivalent resistive networks and then just use the total equivalent resistance in order to figure out what that first heat flux is. And then once we have the heat flux, we can figure out what all those intermediate temperature values are. So good luck with your problems and I'll catch you next time.